in my case, I'm using the the newest version of SAS Blazor, uh, but it's almost the newest one. I think like I'm one version behind, so the code will not change in any case. So let's create a uh, SAS Blazor web application. Of course, we will use XPO and not authentication. And for modules, for this example, I don't need anything, so I will just finish. If anyone has uh, any questions, you can like also use the chat and I will check it as soon as, as possible and answer you here in, in um, within the stream. So let's rebuild this for first time. And we're ready to go. Uh, this is almost done, so let's add a new domain object. So this will be present. So the functionality that I want to show is how to add custom columns to the list view. Columns that with the special functionality based on an HTML template. So for this, we're going to create a really simple business object just with um, name and email. So let's run this at least one time. So let's see how this goes. Live coding, always tricky. I practiced all of this this morning, but you know how it is, right? And I get this exception, but this exception, I guess everyone is getting, like um, I guess it's related to, to Chrome somehow. I moved to different browsers like Opera and Vivaldi, and they don't do it at the beginning, but after a while, this start happening. So I guess something related to the cookies or something like that, because it doesn't happen like the first time. It happens like the third time and then continue happening. So if it happens for you, let's report it to DevExpress. I'm tired of seeing that every time I run the application. Have you had an issue recently where you click into a field in your application or even mm -hmm. any web page for that matter, and it doesn't seem to register until you resize the window or move the window? Uh, yeah, actually it's happening for me in Chrome. And, yeah. and I think it's something that is uh, problems related to, to Chrome, actually not to, to the framework itself. Yeah. Because it happens in any random page uh, lately. Random page, even applications that leverage uh, the Chromium engine seem to be having the same issue. I think it's the Chromium engine because it's yeah. shared between Vivaldi and H and all of them have the same problem at the moment. So I guess the trick will be disable, try to find an old version disable automatic updates and just stay that, uh, just stay like with an old version. Because mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, Chrome by default, it updates uh, automatically. So you need to turn that off, I guess, in general, because all of them are having that problem. So, well, going back to the example, uh, this will be me and my email. When I picked this name, I never realized that the name was really long to tell it as an, as an email. Um, so, well, uh, this is what we have so far. Um, this is a really simple application, just one domain object and two columns in the domain object. So the goal will be uh, try to add a functionality that when I click on over this record, but exactly in this column, I want to um, handle the link. So you know that uh, for, e for emails or for any type of link, there is a tag in HTML and then it will open the right application on your computer. So that's what we're going to do right now. So doing that is kind of really simple. So let's 
stop here. And just in case I have um, something that I used this morning um, and it will be, so it will be easier just in case, you know how it is like. So the idea is uh, we need to create a render uh, with the HTML necessary to render that column. So I'm going to create a Blazor component. Here is the Blazor component that I want to create. So uh, let's go and do that. So let's go to the Blazor module. And add a new Blazor component. And this will be email column template. And it doesn't matter if you nest this into a folder or anything in your solution, right? Uh, well, it depends because uh, this generates code behind somehow. So um, it's not a problem where you put it, but um, once it's there, it's better to not move it because when you move it, mm -hmm. then you will generate a different code behind. And for some moments you will have those like tricky errors that are showing us an error in the studio but they are not truly errors. When you clean the solution, they disappear. So right. if, if you are not like, uh, it doesn't bear you that much to have it in those errors temporarily for a minute or so, uh, then it's not a problem. But sometimes if you're just learning how to handle this, uh, you might spend long time trying to figure it out there or without cleaning the solution and you spend one hour there. So it happened to me the first time, that's how I'm telling you. <laughs> so. Um, it's better to paste it in the in the location where you're going to leave it in the end. That's good advice. So here, what we need to do is basically create. Um, well, we have the component right, and if you see the, this component is super simple. We only have uh, we only need to return an HTML tag in general. So um, the thing is that uh, we need to invoke the render of this component from code. So we have this static method that will return the right HTML tag um, that we need to render. So basically I'm going to copy this part. Okay, that's what we need. And if you just join, uh, can anyone please mute their mic? If not, I'm going to mute them, sorry for that. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's go back to the solution. So it's this one. So the part that I'm going to replace is this. And we don't need any HTML here, basically. So we just need to um, delete this HTML tag that was in the top. And here I'm going to comment this out for a little bit. So I wanted to explain what is happening in here. Okay, so we do have um, here a, a razor component that's going to render just an HTML tag. That HTML tag will be the column in the grid control, basically. So uh, there are a few tricks that we need to do here. So first, okay, um, we will make a link tag, which is an a ref. That's what we have in here. And then uh, we need to avoid this event to propagate uh, over the other components, because if we don't do that, uh, basically when you click, you will end up opening the detail view. So instead of doing that, we have some special JavaScript instructions like, um, see a stop immediate propagation. So other components that are listening to this event will not uh, be triggered because of that instruction basically. And the other thing that we need to know here is that uh, this render will receive um, uh, the current object. So that will mean the current row of that um, uh, in the grid. So we know that in each row we will have a person because that's the person that we just created the person object. So Basically what I'm going to do here is like to remove this part and I need to import this namespace because even though it's showing here that it's green, like it's working, it's not because it's missing the namespace on top. So it's this one. Okay, so I have the component that will create the render. Now we just need to replace it at some moment, like basically customize the, the property editor or the list editor in this case. So for that, I would need a, a view controller. So that view controller already have it here. So I'm just going to copy it from here and then explain you the code. 
So let me get this from here to here. And uh, let's go back to our solution. And let's add controller. This controller you need to add it in the Blazor module because otherwise you will not have access to some namespaces or some references. Remember that uh, self application they are based on like a cascade in general, like a waterfall. So um, if you do it in here, you will not see the reference to the component that we just created. So anyway, let's add a new view controller here. Lately, I'm not creating view controllers with the templates. I'm just doing it with the control shortcut. So uh, in this case, I'm going to create a class because I'm going to paste the code in general. So uh, I don't, as I told you, I don't use the item template anymore. I just do something like uh, sub controller view and that will create a view controller class for me. So I'm using that uh, lately. So but here, let's paste the code. Um, let me delete this code because that was a test that I was doing before. So here we're going to make this uh, um, an object view controller. That's a more specialized version of the view controller. Basically, you tell them on which view you want to, which type of view you want to use, and which type of object you will will this view represent. So let me import the namespaces. Okay, so right now we have the namespaces for the staff part, which are the view controller in this case, which is the view controller in this case. And now basically I need to import the namespaces for the Dev Express component. So let's import this also. And for the columns. So basically here what we're doing is like when the view create the controls, like basically in this case, the grid control, um, we want to uh, iterate through the columns. And when we find the column that we want, we will create our own render instead of the default render. So um, the render that we will create is this uh, component and we have this method create. So we just need to get the name of the class, which in the component, you don't see the class, but the name of the class is the name of the file name basically. So I will copy the file name. Um, put this here and we know that there is a static method create and that we will pass a person object which already has the email property. So, so far so good. This is like kind of really simple. It took me a while to figure it out and I need to ask the Express for support because like in general, there are like hundreds of ways to handle uh, Blazor components and you can do basically all type of magic since normal magic until really black magic, like that range. You can go really crazy with this. So, so your, uh, your object space de declaration for person was incorrect. You got the oh. persistent base implementation rather than yours. Oh. Okay, so let's delete the persistent base. This one, thanks, yeah. uh, they, thanks. <laughs> they, that's yeah. tricky when you, when you when you have that, those uh, classes that they they exist in a different namespace, like person, email, and stuff like that, so is this one is the right one? Great. So so far so good, and I will upload this um, this source to GitHub so everyone can take a look to it. And here are the the um, uh, the links that I use uh, to figure out this this example. So let me compile this and run it. Okay, so let's see if it works, you know, like live coding is always uh, tricky. Even if you practice that before, or if you do this like eight hours per day, every day, the still you can say. So let's see, someone else is in the chat.
Okay, let's give it a try to this one. Okay, so see now it shows send email. Uh, the word sends email is in the HTML tag, actually. And uh, if you see it's highlighted as an email, it's not text. So when I click over here, it will ask me like if I want to open the like the right application to handle the email protocol. This this is the most simple example, but remember that you can put any type of HTML tags or components that you want to, to use. For example, in some other cases. Uh, we have a delivery application that we show the address as link. And when they click on, uh, on the address, uh, they use it on mobile devices. Uh, the, it pop up Waze. I don't know if it, Waze is popular in any other countries, but in El Salvador, that's what we use as navigator. We don't use Google Maps or Apple Maps. Waze is the one, the one that we use. I think Waze, it actually belongs to Google anyway. So, um, Basically, this is the most basic example, but you can go crazy with any, any integration there because you have the space to put your own HTML component or JavaScript component and do whatever you want in that column. So uh, any questions, feel free to contact us in the chat or open your microphone. 